Okay, guys, it's uh, about time for a new build. Uh, Andy Shen keeps uh, pumping out uh, new frames and new ideas, so I had to get me one of those. I really like the Mako, so uh, I thought I should give the Orca a try. And I got the, uh, the one. I just ordered the bottom plate from Andy because uh, I ordered a custom uh, pod from uh, Chris Griffin over at Phoenix and uh, Phoenix Solutions, I think it's called. And uh, nice sticker as always. Um, this quad is uh, like the Marco, a little bit stretched and I really like the stability that provided when flying uh, racing. So uh, I'm gonna be building uh, this one and in uh, comparison to the Marco, this one does not have any cutouts for the, um, the battery straps battery strap on this one actually goes under the frame as well between the frame and there's no cutout for the straps and, and this frame is really 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 stiff and it's four millimeter carbon and I can't really find any flaws in the cutting as well it's beautiful it's a beautiful piece of carbon with the frame, I'm going to be using uh, the latest version, or not the latest, but almost the latest. It's the uh, RCX engine motors, 2633 kV with the 7075 steel um, outer housing. And uh, although the, the windings are not the best, I've had good luck with these motors. They've been uh, not the best performance, uh, performers, but uh, I think they're quite efficient and uh, provides more than enough power for uh, my style of flying anyways and uh, they're really light as well and of course really cheap, less than uh, $9 I think. So I'm quite happy with these. I'm going to be using the uh, HS1177 uh, 1177 of course, this is the one with the, uh, I put on the 2.5 lens, because that's what I fly now, and I'm going to be flying the Spectrum of course, Spectrum receiver, I'm going to fly an F3 target, and I will repeat this one with the uh, usual pins as well. <coughs> I'm going to be using the uh, FX7990 uh, for the VTX is a 25 meter one because that's what we use for racing. Speed controllers are going to be the Racer Star 30 amps. I've uh, prepped these with, uh, the way I always do, with liquid tape. And here they are ready to go. And for PDB I always use the red rotor one, this one is the new Matek uh, PDB OSD and I uh, prepped this one with liquid tape as well. <coughs> also ready the uh, cables for the VTX and the camera. And I uh, put on a pigtail on there as well. The form factor on this one is a bit different, uh, you can see it, it kind of extends the mounting hole here. So I think that's going to be a little bit of a problem here. You can see that it kind of covers up the mounting hole on the side there. So we'll see how that uh, works out. Not sure if it's going to be a problem or not. We'll see. That's it. I'm going to start prepping the carbon now and uh, start mounting the hardware. The pod has not arrived yet, so uh, the build has to be delayed until I get the pod, but I uh, should be here really soon. So that's it for now. I'm gonna start mounting the stuff and uh, 
We'll see how that looks. Okay guys, uh, so here I have it uh, all mounted up. Mounted the motors, speed control, side them on, and shortened the wires for the PDB. I really like this uh, PDB because, to be honest, you don't really have to remove the flight controller to get to the, uh, the power wires, so it's easy to easier to uh, exchange an ESC if it uh, if it breaks. So I really like this uh, setup. What I did on the edges here, uh, I uh, filed off or dremeled off some of the corner on the PDB. Hopefully that will be uh, enough to be able to attach the um, pod uh, on the side here. I might have to dremel off some uh, plastic on the pod itself. We'll see. Should be okay anyways. Um, yeah. So everything is mounted up. Uh, I can remove the uh, light controller. And you can see the soldering of the uh, motor wires, the ESC wires right here. <coughs> this is the uh, 5 volt out for the uh, flight controller. I've uh, also added the uh, receiver cable for the uh, UART 3 port on the uh, flight controller as well. I also added a uh, beeper right here. And that uh, shouldn't be a problem. What I'm contemplating on doing is uh, adding a uh, cap here, 35 volt cap, and maybe putting it on the back here. We'll have to see when I get the pod how well the uh, VTX fits under here. It's uh, quite a tight fit, so we'll see if there's room. I'd like to uh, use these uh, just to eliminate any. Uh, current spikes uh, from the speed controllers so it's a bit big but should be okay so we'll see you when we get the pod and uh, that's it for now uh, next time I'll have the pod in the mail and uh, we'll see how that mounts up okay youtubers so I finally got the Part from uh, Chris Griffin at Phoenix 3D Solutions. Uh, it's a beautiful print, two color, and absolutely amazing. Uh, nice, nicely done with the print. It's uh, more or less totally perfect, as good as it gets. Some small flaws here, but that's to be expected when you have two colors. Other than that, it's perfect. I did some modifications to the hole. I removed the hole on this side. I made the um, uh, just a set angle for the camera. Uh, this is a 2.5 lens on the HS1177 camera in here. It's mounted in here. Uh, also mounted the um, Spectrum satellite receiver. Uh, unboxed in here. Just. Uh, stuck it in there with some uh, double-sided tape and also here is the uh, ETX as well the FX 796 25 mil watts and the Fox here antenna on top and uh, that's the pod ready to go and also I finished the um, body of the quad as well uh, what I did is, uh, last time I was uh, thinking about adding a uh, capacitor and I've uh, decided there is space in the front, as you can see right here, um, so I started to the uh, battery terminals on the PDP on the front here, I just uh, lined it up with an angle, it's more or less the same angle as the camera so it fits perfectly in there. Also added some double sided type here just to tidy up the cables and the wires, loose wires. Make sure everything is uh, not moving around. Um, 
I add a double sided top on the sided tape on the top of the uh, ESCs as well as tape. That's because of the props I'm using, which is the Dial Props 5046, which is quite bendy. So sometimes in a crash, they actually hit the top of the ESC and cuts off the uh, terminals and starts a fire sometimes, uh, which is not good. So just some extra insulation on the top there. Also, I had Chris print me some of these uh, protectors for the arms. Uh, I don't know if they're needed, but uh, they look cool. So that's it. Um, I haven't done much else, so I'm ready to actually just mount it up and see how much she weighs, which would be interesting. So I'll be right back. So, um, got it all together. Looks really good. Uh, just a matter of connecting the three wires uh, and uh, just mounting the screws around, and she's uh, completed. I can definitely sense and feel that it's more, it's heavier than the uh, Mexico pod, but that's to be expected. It's a bigger quad, bigger pod, and. Um, assuming maybe around 300 grams and uh, so let's put it on the scales and check it out see how much she weighs so there we go on the scales 300 316 grams so yeah not too low and let's see if we can get the props on. That's without the props. More props. Oh, that's a bit difficult. I can do it. Yay. Okay, with the props is 332 grams. 332 grams. 332 grams with the props and all on. So there you have it. A little bit more heavy than the um, Mixuku pod, but as I said, as, as expected due to the bigger quad itself. But it's not heavy by any means. So it's gonna be um, exciting to test it out. Next video will be a flight video. Hopefully I'll be able to do that tomorrow. And uh, we'll uh, see how she flies and how she tunes. Until then, if you like what you see, please, please uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>